You know, God has given us a lot of beautiful gifts, a lot of beautiful things. He's trying to flow stuff into you so you can flow it out. But here's the deal. You maximize the blessing you receive by managing the blessings you have. See, if you want more, you want more from your story, you want more from life, you want more of the gifts that God is waiting to give to you, you got to give them away. So he's not going to give, if you hold it, if you keep it to yourself, if you don't maximize it, you don't, you don't engage, he's not going to give you anything more. And that's what we're going to learn here in this, this parable. Basically, you, you grow what you sow. And we see this in, in, in Matthew 25. Jesus again tells this story, verse 14, for it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. And then he, the master, went away. So, so Jesus is telling this story and he's, he, he's, he's talking about a story that was pretty well known in, in sort of the first century. Like this principle of a master uh, equipping servants or slaves to go out, like to, to take these talents and, and to invest them and to, to uh, grow them for the master. That was a, 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 a concept that the listener would have understood at the time. And the other thing that's important about this, it doesn't really say this exactly in the, the parable, but it's true of the general framework of this master giving talents to his servants, is that, that the servants would actually participate in any earnings or gains that would be uh, uh, discovered on, on this sort of uh, business proposition. And so the master gives... One guy, five talents, another guy, two talents, and, and one person, one talent, right? And I know we are hearing the word talents, and what talents in that day really was, was a measurement of money. It's, well, it's talenton is really the word. And it's not talents like you got a singing talent, you're on American Idol. It, it's talents is money. It, what's also important here, just to give you some context, is that what the master is giving to the servants is not just like a couple hundred bucks. This is real money we're talking about here. In fact, five talents, five talents back in this day, as, as Jesus is telling the story, five talents equated to today's numbers is about $1.8 million. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of responsibility that the master is giving the servant, okay? Even if you're holding one talent, that's still about $350,000, right? And so the master gives these resources, gives, gives a lot of money to these guys. We pick up in verse 16, it says, The one who had received the five talents went off and, at once and traded with them and made five more talents, Good job. He doubled his money. He must have, he must have invested in Bitcoin, right? That's, that's must have what happened here. Like he doubled his money. Oh my gosh. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. Again, doubled what the master had given him. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. He didn't do anything with it. He just stuck at it in the ground. And after a long time, the master of those slaves came back and settled accounts with them. So, so, you know, the two guys doubled. One guy buried. And here's what the, the master says to the uh, servants that doubled the money, the five and the two. His master said to them, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of the master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man. And it's really important here in the scriptures, like that word master uh, is actually the Greek word kurios. And, and what really kurios means Lord. So really Jesus in this this telling of the story is saying, I'm referring to myself as the master in this story. I'm the Lord. I am the guy giving the talents. And here's this guy who I gave one talent to who's saying, I'm harsh. 
Well, listen, that, that doesn't make any sense at all at first. I mean, any master who would give you $350,000 and the way this whole business setup goes, you, you get uh, the, some of the earnings and, and a percentage of the earnings off of that. That doesn't sound like a harsh master. That sounds like a very good master. Like, I'm going to give you a lot of my resources to go uh, you know, invest, but I'm also going to allow you to benefit. And here's this guy with one talent. He goes, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But the master, his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. See, the biggest problem here is not about, about uh, the risks and the returns and the percentages and the money. What the point here, with the problem with the one talent guy is that his perspective of the master was completely flawed. A, a flawed perspective is going to block God's power. See, how you see God and how you see his, your relationship with him is going to impact how you use your gifts and how you engage in the world and how you help others and how you love and how you encourage. What you risk will depend on what you believe and what your perspective is of God. It just will. And we see it here in this story. The, the, the guy's going, man, God, here's how I see you. Lord, master, here's how I see you. You're harsh. You reap where you do not sow. Like, that's a very negative view of the master. And the master's doing anything but that, right? But that was his perspective. And then we get the results, right? And so, so often we're, we're, we're just basically offered up these two options in terms of how our faith is expressed, how we live it out. We can have this scarcity faith or we can have this abundance faith. And it, it would sort of look like this. Scarcity faith looks like, well, I'm kind of in charge of my own life. I'm responsible. Uh, I got to do it all. I, I, you know, it's about me. And let's say, let's say we're making a cake here, okay? And you're making a cake and there's your cake. It's four pieces. And then you give a couple of pieces away to some friends, right? And then all of a sudden you give all the pieces away and then you've got this empty plate. You're like, oh, great. All my cake is gone. Now I have to make more cake because that's what the scarcity uh, mindset looks like. It's I got to do it. I got to create it. It's all about my, my thing. And so, gosh, it's so, these people that I, my neighbors, they drive me nuts. Or my people at work drive me nuts. I keep giving them all this cake and they eat the cake and then I got to come up with more cake. This is an exhausting, stressful, worried life right there. But that's not the way the kingdom works because the kingdom works like this. It's abundance and it's about God making the cake, okay? When God makes the cake, all right, we got the cake, and then we give the cake away to some people, and then all of a sudden, we've got an empty plate, nothing left, all the cake's gone. You don't make it, God makes it. It's a very different concept. God's going to give you more and more, and he's going to keep refilling your gifts and your passions and your creativity. He's going to keep giving you more and more opportunities if you're working in this abundance faith mindset. Now, I'm not talking about, like, the prosperity gospel. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff, or I just, if I just, like, manifest, um, you know, good things, God's just going to give me good things. No, the, the story here is just saying, you have something in your hand, go use it so I can give you more. 